This video does have a disclaimer. It is intended for educational, informative, and entertainment purposes only. Some of the content herein contains suggestive themes. It is never my intent to disrespect any individual spoken about or watching my videos. Viewer discretion is advised. So welcome everybody. As you may notice, I have a completely different background. And what I decided to do for this video is combine my two passions. So I have a second YouTube channel with my husband, Richard, and it is Roscoe Pops right here. And what we do, we collect Funko and do unboxings. Uh, it's a lot of fun over there and uh, we are part of a Funko community. And so that's actually what gave me the nerve to start a second channel uh, and pursue my real passion, which is true crime. So I am more comfortable down here in this studio. And I've been trying to work with backgrounds and do voiceovers for my videos. And I said, you know what? I feel like I am more my authentic self in this room. So I said, let's just try it. Because I thought at first, maybe it would be a little bit distracting, but I have to be me. So I hope you like it. If you have any questions about the Funko Pops or the Funko community or anything, just let me know. Um, everything will be linked below as far as channel, Instagram. So. Anyway, just let me know. So my name is Angie. And I am so glad that you stopped by and decided to give me a shot. Stay around, watch a video, maybe two. And if you don't mind, click that like button and I hope you'll subscribe. I put out a new true crime video every week and I hope I'm progressively getting a little better at it. And I'm so glad and thankful for the people who stopped by and hit subscribe and gave me a shot. So, so without further ado, let's get into today's video. So guys, I'm bringing you a video today that was happening in my teenage years. Yes, I'm dating myself, I know. But I remember this. And it came to light because a new uh, show on Lifetime brought it to the forefront. So I'm going to tell you about it and let me know if you remember it and um, yeah, let's go. Susan Lee Smith, that's who we will be discussing today. If you don't know, um, this case happened in the 90s and it was about the same time as the OJ Simpson trial but I'm pretty sure that everybody even though they were invested in the OJ trial knew about this as well so anyway uh, Susan Smith was born September the 26th 1971 to mom Linda Sue Harrison and dad Harry Vaughn. But Harry would only be in Susan's life for six years as he took his own life when she was six. Mom would then go on to remarry a guy named Beverly Russell who would become Susan's stepdad. So Susan did very well in school. She was popular, um, it's very smart. But in 91, after she had graduated, she married a guy named David Smith. So she would go on to have, or they would go on to have two sons, Michael Daniel, who was born October the 10th, 1991, and Alexander Tyler, who was born August the 5th of 1993. It would be said that they would have a Susan and David would have a tumultuous relationship. 
and so they eventually separated and Susan began an affair with a co-worker named Tom Finley. Now Tom was the son of the owners of the company where Susan was the secretary. So it was seemed as though it was kind of one-sided though he seemed it just as a casual relationship where she saw more. Um, I don't know if she was in love with Tom Finley or they were very wealthy and that statement will come into play a little later. Um, don't know what her true feelings were of that situation. However, um, she did begin opening up to Tom and sharing some of her secrets with him. So she had shared that her stepdad, Beverly Russell, had started molesting her around 16 years old. And that when she tried to tell her mom, she didn't take her seriously. And this relationship with her stepdad, and I call it that because that's how it was worded, um, but it would continue on through Susan's adulthood. And in fact, just a couple of months, you know, prior to the situation that we are discussing. She would also admit to sleeping with Carrie Finley, who was Tom's dad and the owner of the company. So Tom, he was like, you know, this is too much. And he had written Susan a letter. Now I'm not gonna read the whole letter. They had a lot of letters back and forth. But the gist of this one was he was ending things and the reasoning for it was basically he did not want children, right? Well, Susan did not take this very well. It was reported that she was very depressed and she would call a local pub that they would frequent together and ask one of her friends there, hey, is Tom there? Well, yeah, uh, has he asked about me? No. And you know, that's, if, you, if you're in your feelings with somebody, it's kind of hard sometimes, you know, when you hear that. Girl, they didn't ask about you. It, it, it's kind of a blow. So anyway, and, and that's how Susan took it. So <clears throat> the day, October the 25th of 94, Susan picked up her kids, Michael and Alex from daycare, and she would go home and feed them dinner. It was said to be pizza. And she decided to go for a ride. She thought a ride would clear her head and do her some good. So she leaves and she stops by Walmart, she says. And on out a ways, she would claim to have been uh, carjacked. And she would say that an African-American man grabbed her out of the car and that she tried to get back in screaming for her babies and he just pushed her out and took off. Now Susan would give a description of the man right here. And so everybody was looking for this guy because he has taken off with the car and he has taken off with Michael and Alex. Well, she would get on 
news outlets and, and David being right by her side, crying, crying, and um, pleading for them to bring, to bring her babies home. Mommy and Daddy loves you. Just come home, Mommy and Daddy will be waiting for you. Please let me take them. And he said, no, he didn't have time because they were in car seats and it was going to take time for me to get them out of the car seat. And um, they just told me, he said, but I won't hurt them. And he just took off. But he had a gun. And then my, my big thing is they were screaming, hollering, and crying. And I'm just scared that he just lost his patience or something. You I know? plead yeah, to the guy, to the man, me and my wife, plead to him to please return our children to us safely and unharmed. We love our children very much and we want them returned to us safe and sound. Pray even now for their safe return. Thank you. Was last seen wearing a red and white striped outfit and a blue and red coat. In an investigation where the suspect is unknown, where you don't know where he's liable to turn up, there's not a lot more than you can do is take the complaints, follow up on them, develop your leads, develop your suspects, and rule them out one at a time. It's slow moving. I can't, I have to apologize. There's nothing more that can be done for that. But like I say, it's a classic investigation that could not be run any different anywhere else. I'm hitting this one. Yeah. Pray most of all for them and that they are being taken care of and that they are safe and that they will return home safely. I want to say to my babies <laughs> that your mama loves you so much and your daddy and these whole families love you so much. <laughs> and you guys have got to be strong because you are, we, 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 I just know, I just feel in my heart that you're okay. But you got to take care of each other. But during all of this, the investigators are getting a little bit suspicious, right? And <clears throat> so they question Susan a little further. And the more they push, the more she tries to push back. So she's like, starts get, getting attitudeish, right? And like, that's not suspicious enough. So anyway, Susan finally breaks and she says, no, my boys are not all right. They are at the bottom of the lake. So what she had done was she had drove to John Day Long Lake and she claims that she was going to take her life and her boys lives at the same time so when you're going down if you've ever seen a boat ramp it kind of goes like this so you can back your back your boat off and into the water so what she says is that she drove her car and she parked she pulled the emergency brake and she let off the emergency brake and it rolled a little bit further she let up on it again so Susan gets out, lets the emergency brake down, and the car rolls off into the water. Now let me tell you, eventually there's a trial and we'll get to there. But they did a recreation of the car sinking they took the same type of car and at the same spot, same amount of weight, and they let it roll into the water. It took six minutes for the car to be totally submerged. Think about that, six minutes for those babies. <clears throat> So, so Susan is arrested.
for murder. So, in 1995, the trial began. And the judge wouldn't allow cameras to be in there because they had seen what a spectacle the OJ trial had been like and said that emotions were seemed to be higher and um, it was just very stressful, more stressful than, you know, an average high profile trial. So no cameras. And this case was already a huge case for Union, South Carolina, right? But it had also started gripping the nation. And <clears throat> so the defense attorneys would say that this case was not about evil, but it was about despair and sadness. They would say that Susan drove herself to the lake and her body willed itself from the car. Now, prosecution believed she murdered her sons to start a new life with Tom Finley. Now, Tom Finley was called to testify and he had to tell the secrets that he had been told by Susan. And her stepdad, Beverly Russell, agreed that yes, he had indeed done that to with Susan and but his father Carrie adamantly denies ever having a sexual encounter with Susan so <clears throat> now it only took the jurors two and a half hours to convict her which I mean it was it was kind of cut and dry, but then I think the penalty phase was more, you know, what are we going to do here? Because the death penalty is on the table and the prosecution is hammering down for it. You know, if ever there needed to be a death penalty case, son, you know, seen all the way through, this is it. So argued passionately for it. Now, the defense would argue, why kill her? Let her live with what she's done and think about it every day. Now, during all of this, Susan's, well, the defense's psychiatric evaluation had diagnosed Susan with dependent personality disorder and major depression. So the jury would rule against the death penalty and she would receive life in prison. She was remanded to the admin segregation unit at Camille Griffin Graham Correctional Institute but later had to be transferred to the Leith Correctional Institution in Greenwood. So, what happened to cause this transfer? Okay, Cellmate Secrets is the show that I was speaking about that came out on Lifetime that brought this whole case back to the forefront for me. And in Cellmate Secrets, they talked to cellmates of, you know, higher profile defendants, convicts. They've done on Chris Watts, they've, uh, the Susan Smith, they've done a few more. And this is very in, this is a very interesting show and I highly suggest that you go check every episode out if you love true crime like I do. Susan had sexual relations with two of the guards. There would be Lieutenant Houston Cagle and Captain Alfred Rowe. 
Plus she had at least five infractions, including self-mutilation, uh, use and possession of uh, illegal substances. So in 2000, Lieutenant Houston Cagle had relations with Susan. Now he was a 50 year old uh, prison guard and it had happened, it was said to have happened four times. So he pled guilty and spent three months in jail. And in 2001, Captain Alfred Rowe pled guilty for relations as well, and he was sentenced to five years probation. Now, while she, let's see, she, that happened in Camille, and then she was transferred to Leith. Now, in Leith, former cellmates Christy and Stephanie would both claim that they saw Susan use different substances in any way imaginable using them. I would go on to say the colorful descriptions, but you can find that online, I promise you. Christy would say that Susan would pay her to procure said substances um, as Susan has money on her accounts. She gets it from her family and she also gets it from her many supporters. So, you know, in prison, money talks, everybody has a game, you know, a way to, to survive, right? So, and, <clears throat> and Alfred Rowe said that her substance abuse would grow in Leith as she could no longer get the attention of men, which is actually her ultimate substance. All would say that Susan is a master man manipulator. And that made me think back to earlier when I said, okay, what was she in this relationship with Tom Finley for? Because his family was wealthy. So there was money involved. So was it love? Was it money? Was it both? And all I can think about is those six minutes that it took for that car to submerge and those babies in their car seats in the back when they pulled Susan's car out of the lake the babies were still strapped in to their car seats so yeah Susan has a crazy life she had a you know a tumultuous upbringing um, she had issues with depression and attempts on taking her own life she had been in a psychiatric facility at one point and but I can't get I can't get past those six minutes now did the defense have it right by saying spare her life and let her live with what she's done every day or did the prosecution have it right I don't know I can tell you this though Susan is up for parole in November of 2024 do I think she will get it probably not but the thing is she still has that to look forward to Alex and Michael have nothing to look forward to here on earth let's just say that so guys what do you think of this story were you around when it initially come out did you see it on cellmate secrets and then go back and look at the original story 
and um, or is this the first time you're hearing about Susan Smith? I'd be curious to know. So I want to thank you all for clicking play. I hope you liked the video and if you did please click the like button. Hope you subscribe and tap that notification bell because every time I upload a new video you will automatically be notified. So again friends, thank you. My name is Angie. These are my Funkos. And I have just uploaded. See y'all later.